So let's start with the user experience. The first uh, feature that I want to introduce is the data set resizing. It is the resizing of columns. This is a request that we have received from the first version of the application. We have made some attempts to, to offer a solution, particularly on the first column where we have the name of the data element. But we have implemented now what we think is a, the final solution for this is a drag and drop resizing of any columns, either the first one for the data element, uh, name of the row, or the ones that have the category options. And now the users can resize each specific column. They can resize all of them at once, and they can also reset to the to the default sizing. So I'm going to show you how that works here. So we are going to add a new data set for this period. I, I hope you can notice that there are small improvements in the design of the app here and there that make it look cleaner. Uh, so let's resize. To resize a column, I first have to tap. So right now we can resize the first one for the name. And if I wanna resize, I'm gonna use this table, yes. If I wanna resize the other ones, it's the same. I just stop, tap in the, in the header and resize. If we don't like how it looks by tapping here, the top right icon, I can reset to the default sizes. And if we want to adjust the whole table at once, then we tap in the corner. And now whatever we do will apply to the whole table again. So we really hope this makes the, the data sets more usable, particularly for long names. Let me move this here. And then let's move to the next um, feature, which is the new error sync flow. We have implemented a new, um, let's say, flow for helping the user navigate through the home from the home screen to the particular error. And, and we were doing this somehow before by offering different levels of information. So the contextual sync feedback is not really new, meaning that we adjust the message to where the user is. If you are in the home screen, we are not giving you a lot of details. We give you more details as you get inside the program or inside the tracked entity instance. However, it looks simpler and cleaner right now in the new version. And the most important, it lets the user navigate from, uh, from the home screen to the specific error. So let's have a look at that. I am in the home screen now, so I'm gonna trigger the sync process. So it's telling me that we have two programs that need to sync, but then there is one program, malaria case diagnosis, treatment and investigation that has sync errors. And it's not giving me any details, it's just telling me tap here to explore. So if I tap here, it's opening the program screen and triggering the sync process again. In this case, we have only one tracked entity instance with an error, it's showing me the first uh, tracked entity instance attribute. If we had more, they would be listed. And then the user can select which one am I gonna fix? So we want to fix head, so I'm gonna tap on head. And now that it opens the tracked entity instance is when it's telling me what is the exact error, which is a problem in the system case ID, for example. So when I tap there, it's opening the form uh, directly <clears throat> and it's highlighting in red in both places, here on the section and here on the field where the problem is. So these are three steps, but we need to, and in this example, I showed only one error in one program, but the user might have errors in different programs and we need to offer different ways to navigate. So hopefully with this, we are facilitating the the fixing errors or fixing sync errors for the end user. So let's move to the next, which is user experience data entry. There are a few improvements. So I'm gonna present all of them uh, together, the improvements that we have made in the data entry forum for tracker and event programs. And I will make a small demo at the end. The first one is the signature rendering type. It has been requested for, for some time now that 
we want the user to be able to sign using the, the, the device in the screen, on the screen of the device. So we have implemented that, that uh, now, and it's based on uh, either data element or attribute of type image. So you select your attribute, you select your data element, and then when you are configuring the, the program in your maintenance app, you, you select a rendering type, which is called Canvas. This is available now from 240, uh, sorry, from version 40 and the 28 of, of Android. The next one is that we have implemented a few actionable value types. The value types that are actionable for now are the email value type, phone number value type, and link value type. So when you use any of these uh, value types in your fact entity instance attributes, you will see in the form, as you can see here on the screen, that there is a little icon. So when you tap on the icon, the related application will open. Let's say if you tap on the phone, it will open the phone app or let you choose between phone, Skype, whatever apps you have for making phone calls directly from the tracked entity instance details. This is just based on the, um, on the value type of the attribute. So you don't really need to, to do any, any configuration to make it work. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Next one is that we have extended the rendering types for option sets. So there are different rendering types available already, which are radio buttons and checkboxes, either in vertical or horizontal, and then visual uh, data entry if they have icons connected to the options in the option set. The difference here, what is new here, is that now those rendering types are available for any value type that the option set has. Before, it only worked for numbers in the case of visual, and I think text uh, for the others. But right now, as, as long as you have an option set, you will be able to choose any rendering type to, to shape your, your, the layout of your data entry form. And then some other small things, we have added even more loading banners in some screens that were reported to be <clears throat> a bit slow in some cases. We have improved the offline user experience by disabling the buttons that do not really make sense when the application doesn't have internet, for example, sync. And we have improved the, improved the display of long text in some places. For example, the, the, um, the names of the stages when they are very long, they were cut before. So we have made those improvements um, in a few places. So let me show you the data entry. Let's go to the reproductive um, maternal health program. I'm going to open the tracked entity instance, Mary, and I want to see her attributes. So I open person details and I go to her attributes. And if we go to the bottom of the form, here we have a small example. We can call her directly from here. There we are. We can send her an email if that's what we want. And we can, oops, don't, we can collect her signature. So we would, again, <clears throat> this signature is a tracked entity instance of type image with a specific rendering type called canvas. So now I type, I, sorry, I tap here, and then she can just sign here and we can either Clear, oh, it didn't work well. Okay, let's make a new one and save. This is gonna be saved as an image in the in the server. Okay, let's keep going. We are gonna change now. This is all about uh, user experience and we are gonna go now to implementation support. So the first thing, very, <laughs> very new for us, we are very excited to, to release this. It's a centralized app distribution. What does that mean? We are um, trying to facilitate the control of the version that is used in your mobile implementations. So if you don't use Google Play, you can now uh, use your DHIS2 server to distribute your APKs and to control the version that you have uh, distributed uh, to your users. So the users that connect to your server um, will Will, don't have, will not have automatic updates, the application will check, am I in the right version? And if it's not, it will show a, <clears throat> a pop-up asking the user to update. 
the version, and this will only happen when you uh, administrator decide to change the version of the app that is used on your implementation. So this is done through one of the new uh, web apps that I introduced before, is the APK distribution or app distribution web app. So here is where you will update an APK. So this uses APKs that you can get from GitHub, and then the app, oops, and then the app here will check if uh, if there is a software update. So this looks like this, it's in the settings. So the user now can check for updates and decide if they want to update or not, but they don't have to do it manually. There is an automatic uh, check for updates internally happening as well. So we're really looking forward to see how this is adopted and how this is used. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll help uh, controlling the version that you distribute and help you have more control on your implementation. There are other few things that we have implemented to support uh, the admin. This is from an administration level. Like we want to help the, the administrator that is managing the, the implementation. So first thing is that we have removed the limit for offline accounts. We had a maximum of three. Um, there was no real reason for that, despite the fact that they, that every every offline account keeps a separate and independent database stored in the device. So we were mostly worried about memory. We have removed that uh, limitation. So now it's up to you to decide how many accounts you, you allow to use offline on your facilities. The, version, the, the accounts can be deleted as before, et cetera. The only difference now is that we are not imposing any limit in the number of offline accounts. And the other one, which was a strong request from the community as well, is that the Android settings web app, the one that you, we use for, for configuring appearance analytics and setting parameters, um, does not need the permission all anymore. Uh, the, <clears throat> it, was, it was the case before, like the user that was configuring the settings for Android required to have the all permission. And that's definitely giving way more permissions than required because with all you can do absolutely everything on the server configuration. So we are, we are that this has been changed in since version 40 and the Android settings web app has now a specific authority that will need to be given to the user, uh, which will only give access to, to this application. 